Well, it's the end of 2024 and that means is the right time to review the growth of the bioeconomy, the biotech sector in the last 12 months. And of course, let's look at how it has panned out in the last 24 months and what is going to happen in the next 60 months, which is going to define your life, your career, my career. So in today's video, we are going to investigate whether the bioeconomy really grew, what exactly happened, what was expected and where things are going to happen in the next five years. Now, to start with the key drivers of the biotech economy or the bioeconomy as we speak is the government, of course, because government is investing a lot of money into the biotech sector. They are having public-private partnerships as well as various schemes through BIRAC and through Government of Karnataka's initiative, which is driving the bioeconomy. But having said that, there are certain areas which you should know so that if you want to design your career, probably you can get into those high-performing areas and you can get better jobs in the future. So this video is for everyone in the biotech sector. No matter you are a biotech entrepreneur or wannabe entrepreneur or you are a student or you are a biotech professional professional and or maybe you are a biotech professional with a career break no matter which part of the bioeconomy you belong to you must watch this video so in the last 12 months we saw the first key driver that is biopharmaceuticals and healthcare now biosimilars is the key part where uh, biotech um, industry is going right now in, in India. So right now, India is leading globally with 127 approved biosimilars and majority of that is from Biocon and various other companies such as WorkHard. Now, the second key driver for biopharmaceuticals is vaccines. Currently, our vaccine supply is reaching more than 150 countries. And India is the real vaccine bowl of the world. So India is a global leader in vaccine supply. We have the largest facilities of vaccine supplies in the world, such as Serum Institute of India and Bharat Biotech. Third key driver under biopharmaceuticals is the affordable medicines. So, you know, third world countries such as Africa, Bangladesh and various poor countries where uh, they can't afford costly medicines, which is manufactured in United States and Europe. So that is where our country is leading. We are able to manufacture low cost, high quality drugs, and that is helping us solidify our position in the global market as a market leader in the biopharmaceutical space. So these three things are driving the biotech industry in the biopharmaceutical domain. Now coming to the next part, you know 44% of our GDP is agriculture. So agriculture is where the next big growth we saw. Of course, we saw the production of BT cotton increasing exponentially and now India is a global leader in genetically modified crop BT cotton. Followed by that, we are seeing a revolution right now in the last 12 months in the organic farming space where our country is having the largest area in organic farming compared to any other country. And followed by that, we are seeing a revolution. New companies are coming in for biofertilizer and biopesticide and these eco-friendly alternatives are gaining traction. So that's where you have bio-agriculture growing in the last 12 months. We saw a lot of growth. Now the third key driver of the bioeconomy in India is industrial biotechnology. I'm sure you must have studied this as a subject in your bachelor's or master's. So bio-based chemicals and enzymes and enzyme alternatives, engineered enzymes such as quantum zyme is doing one such work. So the development of sustainable alternatives to traditional chemicals, that's where India is leading right now and a lot of companies such as quantum zyme are working in this domain and they are contributing towards the industrial biotechnology. The next driver under industrial biotechnology is the biofuels. And current existing fuel contributes a lot to the pollution, but biofuels research and development has a lead and uh, IIPR, which is Indian Institute of Petroleum Research, is leading this clean energy initiative. And we have seen now biofuels being adopted. It is being mixed with the air turbine fuel that is the ATF and then it is being used in flights also. So that will lead to lesser pollution. And of course, these plants, when they grow, they will contribute towards oxygen to the environment. So of course, it becomes makes it carbon neutral. Now, the moment I say carbon neutral, I remember another part where in the last 12 months we saw huge growth and that is environmental biotechnology. So we saw various companies coming in which are doing carbon capture now and their utilization. They're de developing technologies to mitigate uh, climate change. Also, we are seeing a lot of startups coming in into the waste management space. Various companies I am grooming are also in the waste management and bioremediation space and they are creating biotechnological solutions for effective waste management. So that's where we saw growth in the last 12 months. But now coming to the next 60 months, that is uh, five years from today, where exactly 
India will be standing. So currently we are at 130, 140 billion-ish ballpark figure. But in the next five years, we are going to hit 300 billion dollars in the market size in India. And the key drivers for that, now we will be looking at it. The key area which uh, the government as well as industry is bullish about is biomanufacturing and bio foundries. Now, they are taking initiatives for collective factories where the government invests into the infrastructure and companies can pay the rent and have their products manufactured. These kind of initiatives are happening in Karnataka as well as Pan India. We can see that with the help of Bayrak and government of Karnataka. So establishment of cutting edge bio manufacturing facilities and bio foundry clusters is happening. We are going to see focus on large scale wood production because now, for example, Karnataka right now, there are more than 500 biotech startups. Now, all these startups are at the level where they have the product ready, but they they don't have factories and they cannot afford to have factories so government is setting up the factories and these startups will go pay the rent and do uh, you know manufacture these products and sell it to the world for example mrna based vaccines engineered proteins so that is where the bio manufacturing and bio foundries is coming up in karnataka as well as pan india the next thing which was which is going to drive this growth of the bio economy will be precision biotherapeutics as you know cancer it requires you uh, personalized medicine so that is where precision biotherapeutics comes in the picture development of targeted therapies and personalized medicine is going to drive this space now followed by that of course advancement in gene therapies and regenerative medicine is also going to drive this growth so we are going to see bioprinting we are going to see gene therapies we are going to see stem cell uh, regenerative medicine growth and that is going to drive the growth so if you are making a career in any of these that is also going to help now moving forward we are also looking at the bio it integration and that is going to be the major chunk of the growth in the next 60 months so we have bio AI and integration currently in the bio agriculture space, in the bio manufacturing space, in the bio foundry space, we, in the precision biotherapeutics space. And then we are looking at application of AI in drug discovery, application of AI in genomics, precision medicine. And government is also coming up with ideas of bio AI hubs, which can analyze large scale of biological data and startups can take help of that and come up with newer products and services for the emerging markets across the globe. So that is where we are seeing the bio IT. So if I say that currently India is at $130 billion and if it has to reach to $300 billion, probably $80 billion will come only from the bio IT sector and rest will be the regular growth of other sectors such as biotherapeutics and biomanufacturing. Now, moving forward, we are also seeing a lot of startups coming in into the functional food and smart protein space. So you must have seen innovation in the nutrition pharmaceutical space, you, you must be seeing innovation in the alternative protein space, development of fortified foods, artificial meats from plant-based uh, sources to address various nutritional deficiencies. So we are seeing a lot of smart food companies. Even In fact, I'm also growing two companies which are in the smart food space. So that is going to grow because these companies will come up with smart food and this is something where you don't need any regulatory approval also. You can straight away launch into the market and a lot of uh, people can consume and become healthy so that's where these kind of companies are also going to drive the future of biotech in india now followed with that we are also going to see space biotechnology sector now i'll give you example right now one of the astronauts is stuck in the space she went there for five days but now she's stuck for more than six months and uh, that is where the need for these kind of technologies so that we can sustain humans in the space for longer because by accident or because of some reason now they are stuck in the space but they should not die right so we have to do this research because ISRO is a major driving force here in India and they have massive funding from the government and they are going to send the man on the moon very very soon so that means they also know this that by mistake if anything goes wrong we should be able to sustain the human over in the space or on the other planets. That kind of research is also going to drive the growth of the space biotechnology sector. Now coming to the another key driver, which will be the marine biotech space. So as you know, 99.99% uh, of the marine flora and fauna is unexplored. So we really don't know. So a lot of startups are coming in, they, who, which are trying to create biofuels from marine ecosystem, which are trying to find out nutrition uh, planktons and utilization of these planktons in various other industrial uses. So there are a lot of companies getting into this. A lot of research is going into the marine biotechnology space also.
now having said this a bigger chunk will also come from the infrastructure space you know real estate is the biggest driver of the economy one of the biggest driver so real estate lot of real estate people are going to establish biotech parks incubators science clusters across the country you already have ikp and uh, various other clusters across india and this creation of robust ecosystem will support the biotech startups you right now you have bangalore bio innovation center which has got shared lab space so startups can go rent out the space and use the lab they don't have to buy the instruments and they can use same way byrac is funding a lot of startups which can go and get incubated in either bbc or the c camp so th- these are the key drivers of the growth of our industry bio economy in the next 5 years but having said that more people will be coming forward in the entrepreneurship ecosystem thanks to ibiom and of course biotechnica is also taking initiative so we invite everyone who wants to start a company come over come and interact with us and we will guide you on how your idea can translate into a billion dollars in rupees or dollars now coming to the last part of this video i know i must have left some gaps in my explanation where you might have some questions which you would like to clarify so go ahead put that down in the comment section either i will reply to you or i will make a video out of whatever is your question and that should answer your question so thank you so much for being such a vibrant energetic and interactive audience of biotechnica i will see you soon in the next one till then keep shining keep learning because you are going to be the key driver of bioeconomy by 2050 all the best